Tonight we're going to talk about the Pythagorean Theorem. Objectives, use the Pythagorean Theorem and its converse to solve problems. We're also going to use the Pythagorean Theorem in equality triangles. Pythagorean Theorem. Okay, Pythagorean Theorem, you must have a right triangle. The right triangle is the included angle between the segments, which are your legs, A and B. And across from that right triangle is your hypotenuse. Pythagorean Theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So let's apply this. Find the value of X, put it in simplest radical form. Okay, write your Pythagorean Theorem. We have our right angle. It is included in the two legs, so substitute in for your legs. Simplify. Simplify. Take the square root. Again, Pythagorean Theorem, we have a right triangle. This is the included angle in your two legs. So we have one leg squared plus that second leg squared plus your hypotenuse squared. Okay, let's simplify. Okay, y'all remember how to fall? Let's combine like terms. Let's cancel out these x squares. You're going to solve it like a two-step equation. Okay, Randy is building a rectangular picture frame. He wants the ratio of the length to the width to be 3 to 1. Length to the width. We don't know what those measurements are, so let's put our variable. And the diagonal to be 12 centimeters. How wide should the frame be round to the nearest tenth of a centimeter? Okay. Well, when you have a rectangle, you know that this is a right angle, so we can use the Pythagorean Theorem here. The right angle is included in the two legs, so we have 3x squared plus 1x squared equals 12 squared. So 3 squared is 9, x squared is x squared plus x squared equals 144. Let's simplify. Let's isolate our variable. And then let's take the square root. Let's see here. It says to round to the nearest tenth.
a set of three non-zero whole numbers, A, B, and C, such that your Pythagorean theorem is called a Pythagorean triple. So all this is saying is when your leg measurements and hypotenuse measurement are whole numbers that are non-zeros, then you have a Pythagorean triple. These one, two, three, four are examples of some Pythagorean triples. Okay, find if you have Pythagorean th triple and explain. So first we have to solve for the hypotenuse. So substitute in for your legs. All right, so when you simplify this, C equals 50. Okay, so for our measurements of our segments, we have 14, 48, and 50. So, your side lengths are non-zero whole numbers, therefore, yes, this is an example of a Pythagorean triple. Okay, same thing. However, on this one, we are missing a leg because the right angle is the included angle of these two segments and we're missing a leg. So when you substitute in, we're solving for a leg. Okay, so our segment measures are 4, 12, and something around 11.3. So, this is not a Pythagorean triple because this leg measure is not a non-zero whole number. The converse of the Pythagorean theorem gives you a way to tell if a triangle is a right triangle when you know the side lengths. Okay, the converse of the Pythagorean theorem gives you ways to tell if a triangle is a right triangle when you know the side lengths. Okay. Um, so you got the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. If the sum of the squares of the lengths of the two sides of a triangle is equal to the square of the length of the third side, then the triangle is a right triangle. Well, that's your uh, Pythagorean theorem there. Okay, you can also use side lengths to classify triangle as acute or obtuse. So, when you substitute into your Pythagorean theorem, if your hypotenuse is greater than the square of your, the sum of your two legs, then you're going to have an obtuse triangle. If the hypotenuse, the square of the hypotenuse, is less than the square of the sum of your two legs, then you're going to have an acute triangle. If your hypotenuse is equal to the square of the sum of those two legs, then you're going to have a right triangle. So let's supply this. Let's see what's this. Okay, pretty much kind of what I just said, so let's move on. All right, tell if the measures can be the side lengths of a triangle, a so classified triangle as acute, obtuse, or right. Okay, so first we need to see if it's a triangle. You gotta check each measure here, and make sure it's greater than that third side.
check, check, check. So we have a triangle. Now let's see what type of triangle we have. So we're going to plug it into the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to reverse and do the hypotenuse on this side. So if it's not a right triangle, I can see what type of triangle it is. Okay, remember your hypotenuse is the longest side, and the other two measurements are your legs. So let's simplify. Okay, so we have a hundred, which is going to be greater than. 74. So it's not a right triangle when your hypotenuse is greater than the sum of those legs. What you have is an obtuse triangle. Okay, I'm going to be quiet. Let's see if you can do this one on your own. Well, that was pretty easy. Um, I guess I got lucky with that first inequality there. You don't even have a triangle here because when you take the sum of these two leg measurements, it's not greater than that third side. So this is an example of when you don't even have a triangle. Okay, let's see you do this one on your own. Okay, once again on this one, you're going to have an obtuse triangle. I believe that's it. And it is, guys. Have a good one. See you tomorrow.